One finger, one finger. Hi everyone, Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. So I'm back upstairs to talk to you about bicycle travel cases, bike boxes. This is my long-term review of the larger of the two bike boxes sold by Buxom Box, the Vontu Road Edition. Okay, let's get to it. So I did my initial first impressions review of the Vontu Road Edition when I purchased the bike box prior to my trip to France to participate in the 2022 Haute Route Pyrenees race. Since buying the case, I've used it twice. Most recently, when I flew from Toronto to Italy for last month's Oat Route Dolomites race. So after using the Vontu bike box for over a year now, I thought now is a good time for me to do a long-term review of this travel case. Since my original review of the Vontu Buxom box covered off all of the design features and specs of this premium bike case, this review will mainly focus on the durability and functionality of the case and how well it has served my needs over the last 12 months or so. If you haven't watched my original review of the Vontu bike box, please check it out. I've included a link to the video in the description below. Some brief stats on the Vontu Road Edition bike box. It retails for 996 pounds or $1,652 Canadian. The case without the bike weighs 15 kilograms or 33.2 pounds. The outer box dimensions are 134 by 87 by 36 centimeters or 52.6 by 34.2 by 14.2 inches. It comes with two wheel bags. It requires removal of both wheels and either the removal or dropping down of the seat post, but the handlebars and pedals do not have to be removed. The reason I bought the Vontu bike box last year and the reason I would still buy it today is because it's the only option available on the market that checked off all the boxes of all the features I was looking for in a travel case. There were basically four essentials I wanted for my next bike box. First, for durability and strength, it had to be a hard metal case with some type of anti-crush bar to protect the case from collapsing inwards. Second, for protection of the bike frame and all the important components like the rear derailleur, I wanted a non-contact loading option where the bike is locked into place by the fork and rear dropout mounts, and not by the frame itself. I do not like any of the bike box designs that use straps to tie the frame into the case. In my opinion, that isn't a well thought out design, particularly for more delicate carbon fiber bikes. Third, I wanted a case that when packed with my bike would fall under the size and weight limits of various airlines for normal oversized baggage. These policies vary not only among the airlines, but also depending on what class of ticket you purchase. Usually flying by business class will give you greater weight limits than for economy or premium economy. Weight limits for international flights typically run from 23 kilograms or 50.7 pounds on the low side to 32 kilograms, 70 pounds on the high side. I typically fly with Air Canada and their policy is a maximum weight limit of 32 kilograms or 70 pounds and a maximum linear dimension for the bike box of 292 centimeters or 115 inches. My Von 2 bike box with just my bike packed into it weighs exactly 23 kilograms and the box has a linear measurement of 257 centimeters. So I'm confident I can take it to any destination with any airline and on any trip. Lastly, number four. For ease of packing and unpacking, the bike had to be packed with just the removal of the wheels with the handlebars, pedals, seat posts and saddle left on the bike. This is the main reason I replaced my previous and smaller Box and Box Tourmalet with a larger Vontu Road because having to remove the handlebars and seat posts was just too much of a hassle. Modern bikes with cables integrated within the frame make it really difficult to assemble and disassemble bikes. While this is obvious when looking at the cable routing along the handlebars and stem of the Cannondale Super 6, I underestimated how much internally integrated components complicate seat post removal. My bike is no different than many others in that the seat post removal is complicated for two reasons. The first issue applies to those riders with Shimano DI2 electronic shifting, as the main DI2 battery is often housed within the seat post. 
meaning that if you want to remove the seat post, you have to disconnect the DI2 cable from the battery. In doing so, you then have to be careful not to damage either the cable or the cable port that connects the cable to the battery. Not something I've wrecked, but something that could potentially go wrong. The other thing is that when disconnecting the cable from the battery, you must make sure the cable doesn't accidentally drop inside your frame, as it, it can be difficult to retrieve. So you're going to have to tape it or tie the cable to the outside of your frame to make sure you don't lose it. Again, not something I've had issues with in the past, but it's still risky. The second issue with removing the seat post relates to the seat post clamp. In the past, seat post clamps on road bikes were almost always external to the frame. So removing the seat post was an easy and risk-free process of loosening the seat post clamp and lifting the seat post out of the frame. Most modern bikes like my Candale Super 6 come with an integrated seat post clamp where the seat post bolt is accessible from the outside of the frame, but the seat post clamp is housed within the frame. The problem with this is that when the seat post is removed, the seat post clamp can easily fall to the bottom of your frame. If this happens, that seat post clamp can get lodged below the bottom bracket and can be very difficult to remove. This happened to me on several occasions and twice when I wasn't able to get it out myself. The first time was with my specialized Tarmax, which I had to get my local bike shop to remove it. The second time with my Candel System 6 was when I was cycling in the Northern Alps and I had to get a bike shop in Bormio to dislodge the clamp. Okay, enough about why I chose the Vontu bike box in the first place. Maybe you don't need to look at my first impressions video at all. Now on to my review of how the bike box has held up over the past year of use. It's almost all good news as nothing broke and everything is still pretty much working as well as the day I bought it. I did have one component that got slightly damaged, but I'll get to that later. Most importantly, my bike did not shift during transport and it didn't get scuffed or damaged on either of my two trips. And knowing how airlines sometimes handle checked baggage, I suspect it got thrown around a fair bit. So for me, that's by far the most important thing, that the bike box actually protects the bike. Because this is an aluminum case, the metal will dent and get scratched with each use, but this will not compromise the strength or structure of the bike box. This patina is inevitable and Bucks and Box warns potential buyers of this right up front. If you don't like these travel battle scars, don't buy this case. I kind of like that the box looks like it's actually being used and not just a showpiece. So it's a non-issue for me. The way the heavy duty latches and handles are recessed into the bike box body means they have added protection from hits and heavy items being loaded on top of the case. Plus, the design is really thought out so that when you aren't using the handles or securing the latches down, they tuck away nicely and don't risk sticking out and being caught or snagged. There's little sign of wear on any of this hardware. As for the wheels, I said it in my first review and I'll say it again. These are the best quality and best performing caster wheels you'll find on any bike case. Actually, you rarely see wheels this good on high-end luggage. Pulling the bike box along takes no effort at all like one finger, literally. And this here is on carpet. Pulling across a tiled floor is even easier. Crazy how good these things glide. Okay, now on to the one and only problem I encountered while using the bike box. And it happened on my first trip. The Vontu comes with a cleverly designed anti-crush bar that slides through both wheels and into aluminum mount on the inside surface of the box. This is an important feature as it prevents the box from potentially collapsing inward should a ton of weight be applied to its side. While the anti-crush bar didn't fail on me, it was damaged in transport as you can see here. The bar on the right is a replacement bar I assembled myself out of a solid piece of stainless steel rod, which is incredibly strong. I used it on my most recent trip to Italy and it worked well. The original bar is made out of aluminum and in my case wasn't strong enough to withstand whatever blow it took. I recently brought up this issue with Ed Morris, the owner of Bucks and Box. He responded to my email immediately and shed some light on what was going on. He said that the problem I experienced is very rare and not something he has seen very often. Nonetheless, I was pleased to hear that he changed the original design and is now manufactured from an extruded piece of 6061 aluminum bar that is quite a bit stronger than the original design. 
He sent me off a replacement ND Crush bar and I'll try it out on my next trip. I like this new design and my guess is I'll hold up just fine. So that's pretty much my experience of the Vontu Road Edition bike box, having used it over the past year. How do I rate the Vontu today? Well, I was really impressed when I first bought it, and my opinion hasn't changed a year later. In my opinion, it's the best quality and most protective bike box on the market today. Yes, it's not cheap, but if you care about protecting your bike, it's a mighty good investment. For that, I'll give it an overall rating of 9.5 out of 10. That's all I got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe as it allows me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.